This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one shop to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Launch your passion project with Squarespace. Hello, I hope you're having a great day so far. Today, you and I are going to be learning about method parameters and arguments. So let's start learning about method parameters and arguments by going to File, New, Java Project. As every single video starts off, we're gonna call it method params, hit finish, and then inside there, throw a class in it. As per the use, call it params again, something. Main method, boom. So you may be a little familiar with what a method looks like. A method has these keywords, some parentheses, and then curly braces. So this main method is a method. What's inside the parentheses are what's called the parameters. It's how you pass information into your method. If we have a method that says hi, called maybe say hi, and all it does is print out hi, and then we call say hi in the main method, what it'll do is it'll run the code inside of say hi, which is just print out the characters hi. And this is pretty sweet. It has everything a method needs. It has keywords in the front, it has a name, it has parentheses, and curly braces. And it's implemented, meaning there's code inside of the curly braces. But notice how there's no there's nothing inside the parentheses. That is perfectly fine. A method does not have to have anything inside the parentheses and it can work just fine. But what if we wanted this say hi method to print say anything? Like if I wanted to print my name right now without any parameters, I'd have to make another method called like say Alex and then print out Alex. And then I'd have to change this and instead call the say Alex method to print out Alex. Now, if I want a quick, easy way to print something out through a method, I could just tell the method what to print out and then pass that as a variable. So let me show you what I mean. So instead of this say hi, we can say, call it say something. The name doesn't really matter here but it helps us understand what the method does. So now instead of passing nothing and assuming we're always gonna pass high, what we can do is write the type of variable we want to pass into our method. For this example, since we'll be doing a string, we can write string, say call it S. This can be any name. Now, everything inside these curly braces knows that there's a variable S that exists when the method is called. So if I put S into here, we don't get any red underlines because it knows that S exists and it has to be passed into the method. So now if this was say something, there'd be red underlines because there's nothing in the parentheses. We need something in here to match this string S parameter. That's where we would put what we wanna say. Since this is a string, since it's inside of double quotes, and this parameter is a string, then we get no red underlines and it'll work as expected. So if we run this, it'll print out what we pass in the parameter. Quick terminology, this inside the parentheses of the method is called the parameter. This stays the same in the method. It's always gonna be called string s inside the method. This is the parameter, it stays the same. What you're gonna be putting inside that changes so if this was like dog, this could be microphone, since I'm not very creative and there's a microphone in front of me. This is called the argument. So the argument goes into the method call and the parameter is in the method definition. So now if we save and run this, we'll get microphone. And now since we have this method, we can call it as many times as we want, doing different things as we need to like this. You can pass in multiple parameters of different types. So say we wanted to make a method called print info, where it takes in like say a string, we'll call it name, and then maybe an integer age. Then we can print out name, say is age years old. So now since the say something method doesn't exist, we get red underlines, so I'm just gonna delete these. And let's call print info. But remember, we need to put two arguments separated by commas. 
to match the parameters in the method definition. So we need a name that's a string and an age that's an int. So my name is Alex, and we pass it just like how we do in here with a comma, and I'm 23. Red underlines go away, and we see the formatted output in the console. You can have as many parameters as you want. In the real world, you'll usually be working with parameters anywhere from zero parameters in the method all the way up to maybe 10 is where most are. There's even a way to have n number of parameters, but for 99% of the cases, you'll just list them out here. Method parameters are really useful because it's just like, it's variables that you can pass into your method. It's really easy to call a method multiple times with just different parameters like that. Method parameters are really what makes code very clean, simple, and organized. Without method parameters, there really wouldn't be programming in the sense that we have today. I'll just do another quick example here with a method that maybe returns something. So let's say we wanna add two numbers. We can just call this say add and we'll return an integer instead of nothing. Void means return nothing, usually used for printing something to the console. But in this case, we're gonna return an integer variable, which we're gonna store in the main method. So this will take in two integers. So I'll change this to int and we'll name this x and y. And we're just gonna return x plus y. Now up here in the main method, we can print out this result of this method by just typing that method name and pass in maybe four and five, save and run. We get nine. Since we're returning an integer, what we can also do is store that as maybe multiple results. So we can say result one is adding two and four. Result two and three, maybe do something a little different. And you get the idea here. So the key takeaway here is you're gonna use multiple parameters a lot. Parameters are what go in the parentheses separated by commas of the method definition, where the code is. And the arguments are what changes inside the method call. So I hope you enjoyed this video. But well, first I'd like to take a quick break to tell you about my experience with Squarespace. It's really great. It's the best I've ever used. I've created websites using HTML by scratch. I've made websites with other builders, but this has been the best by far. It's so easy. I got great support. The template I used had basically everything and I got my website up in just a few hours, all of this. I was really into graphic design and I wanted to be like a web designer. And man, what they are doing here is just really, really great. I was able to set up donations have downloadable links and everything I need to make my website personal to me. If you're working on your personal brand as a young professional, or you wanna launch an app or host a program like this, I really recommend Squarespace, guys. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Alex Lee to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Have a great rest of your day.